Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Brother Vivian, for that uh, wonderful time of praise and worship. And uh, yeah, so just before we begin the talk, I'll just uh, start off with a small opening prayer. Before I do that, am I clear? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes, yes Brother, yes. Fantastic. Praise God. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just want to praise you and thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your forgiveness, your kindness, your gentleness. Thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus to die for us, take our place on the cross. Thank you, Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit who guides us, who comforts us, who counsels us. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do all things. Holy Spirit, thank you for making this talk really simple to understand. Only with the words that you want to be said, to be spoken, Lord. Take control of my vocal cords, take control of my mind, take control of this entire meeting, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that we have your wisdom. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, just to begin, uh, I'm going to start off with a question. So how many of us want to live a life of victory? I'm, I'm sure that uh, everyone would be saying yes, shouting yes from wherever they are. Uh, so I'm going to share with you all a secret on how you can actually do that. You know, but it's going to take some effort on your part. It's going to involve renewing your mind. So I'm sure you're all ready for this. And if, if all of you all have, been, have listened to the last talk on which I gave on renewing our mind, I'm sure that we've already started doing the ABCs of our mind renewal. So I'll just quickly go through that as a quick revision. So it's arrest. A is arrest ungodly thoughts quickly. B is believe God's word. C is confess God's word. D, don't consider your situation. E is exalt Jesus with praise. <clears throat> and F is focus on Jesus 24 by 7. So today we are going to study about the power that when unleashed, can destroy every virus, every sickness, every work of Satan, and get yourself into victory. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is the power of praise and thanksgiving. Now, some of you all who know what praise is, and some of you all may not know what praise is, so I'm just going to give you the definition. So praise in the original Greek, means to sing, to tell of, to give, or to confess. We are essentially boasting about God. When we praise God, we are telling Him and others how wonderful and awesome He is. We acknowledge His authority, His perfections, His mighty acts of power, His goodness, mercy, and just all the wonderful things about who and what God is. Now Psalm 104, <clears throat> I'm just going to read that out. I'm not putting it up on the screen. So Psalms 104 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So praise is the act of complimenting God for what and who he truly is and for his virtues. Okay, so that, that's praise. So moving on to thanksgiving. So what is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is simply means to thank God for what he has done for you and is continuously doing for us. 
So you are thanking God for specific things and blessings that he has bestowed upon you all through your life. You could thank God for things such as, you know, for the food, shelter, clothing that he's given you, for your family, for your job, uh, for the protection that he has, you know, put over you, for the finished works of Jesus on the cross, for Jesus himself. So there are, you can just go on thanking God. So that's basically just saying, thank you, God, that you have done, you know, all these things for me. Okay, so I'm just going to put the next slide there. So can everybody see the slide? The difference between praise and thanksgiving? Great. Yes. Uh, so praise is to compliment and, and admire God for all his virtues and for what he is. Whereas thanksgiving is to express thanks and gratitude for God for the things that he has already done for you and for his continuous providence. Praise and thanksgiving can be done in the form of singing, but they can also be done by speaking words or speaking in tongues, or like the psalmist says, by making a joyful noise to the Lord. Okay, so that, that joyful noise could be, you could even be humming, you could be clapping, you know, you could be uh, tapping on the desk, but that's all, you know, if you have the Lord in focus, that is all part of praise and thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is rooted in the gratitude one has for God for the things he has been given by God or will be given. But praise does not come from gratitude. It, it comes from the insight of who God really is. It comes from a relationship with God. Praise and thanksgiving are closely related and interconnected. Basically, one who praises thanks God as well. There is a spiritual power in praise and thanksgiving. What we find in our daily lives, at least most of us, I'll give you my experience. So I think the when I started off, uh, for me, praise and thanksgiving was, you know, going for my prayer meeting. We used to have like a 25, 30 minute of, uh, you know, praise and worship there. Uh, that was praise and thanksgiving for me. After the prayer meeting, you know, most or all of it is forgotten. And we are back into the world where we are, you know, focused on the worldly problems, issues. Uh, and, you know, we are focused more on fear, worry and anxiety. So I'm pretty much sure that, you know, if not now, then earlier when we started off, we were in a similar boat in terms of what praise and worship was. So I'm just going to throw some light on, on what praise and thanksgiving is actually. So I'm just going to move to the next slide. Okay, so can you see that? It says Philippians 4.4. 4. Okay, so Paul saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Okay, now Paul didn't just say rejoice once. He has emphasized it by saying it twice in the same sentence practically. He didn't want anyone thinking he had made a mistake. Just give me one moment here. Yep. So he didn't want anyone thinking he had made a mistake or that there were exceptions to what he said. We are always supposed to be rejoicing in the Lord. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. Or it's not based on our feelings, whether, you know, one day we are feeling good, so we praise and thank the Lord, and the other day we are feeling low, so we like, you know, just forget about it and focus on our problem. Regardless of our situation, this is a command from God to rejoice. This is not about feeling joy based on, you know, our current circumstances or our emotions. But we need to do it simply because the word of God says that we need to. So 
So just imagine Paul's scenario. So right now, okay, uh, just try to picture this scenario. Paul is in the prison. You know, he's he has got beaten, he's tortured, he's facing death. And he's saying that he has found the secret to experience victory, to experience the strength of God. And he's saying the key is to rejoice. Okay, so just imagine that. Imagine if we were in the prison, and you know, we were hit, we were chained up. What would be our thoughts? What would we be thinking of? Would we be thinking of rejoicing? Or would we, would we be thinking of running away from there? So rejoice in the knowledge on who God is. This is what we are supposed to be rejoicing on. Rejoicing in the knowledge on who God is. Rejoice that he has given you Jesus. Rejoice that he has given you the Holy Spirit. Rejoice that this life on earth is just a blink of an eye compared to the eternity that you are going to share with Jesus. Yes, brother. So joy comes from or through the knowledge of the word of God and comes from knowing the end result before it is manifested. When your mind is stayed on God's promises, it gives you joy. And Paul is saying, don't look at your circumstances, but rather look at God. Look at who he is. And he is with you. And if he is with you, then who can be against you? So it's the devil who wants you to be all the time occupied with your trials and tribulations. Because the devil knows when your mind is full of all the issues you're facing, then you're going to let worry, fear, anxiety, you know, come into your mind. And now, brothers and sisters, now you've allowed the devil, or you've given the devil the authority to actually destroy you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we'll just move on to the next slide. Just give me a second here. Okay. So we'll continue with Philippians 4 5. It says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. So when a person is rejoicing for who he is in Christ, he understands the power that is backing him up and how the Lord has given him the victory, how the Lord has forgiven him, how the Lord has given him a new life and has all these wonderful plans and thoughts for him. He understands the potential that God has put in his life, even though he has no physical evidence at all. All that he has is the evidence in the scriptures. <clears throat> but that is enough. When his mind is full of scriptures and he continuously confesses the scriptures, he begins to renew his mind. And now he is full of peace. He doesn't react to situations, but he rather chooses to respond with the word of God. He knows that because the Lord is at hand, because Jesus is in him, with him, and for him. And that's why he is full of peace, joy, and love. When people look at such kind of a person in the midst of storms and chaos, they begin to realize that there is something different about this person. They begin to realize that the Lord is with this person. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, so we'll move on to Philippians 4, 6. It says, be careful for nothing. I'll repeat, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So, 
again it clearly says over here to be careful for nothing which means we are again commanded not to worry about anything any situation or any person i'll repeat it says be careful for nothing which means we are commanded okay it's not a request commanded not to worry about anything any situation any person but in everything okay not for everything in everything we are supposed to praise and thank jesus so brothers and sisters you know we have uh, there are a lot of misconceptions about uh, you know some people think that you know god's putting the sickness on them just to you know you know test them or whatever but that's a wrong that's a wrong thinking and it doesn't align with the word of god okay so never thank god for your sickness because he has not given that to you but in the midst of that sickness you can praise and thank him in everything saying that my god is greater when you praise him you're actually renewing your mind and handing over the battle to god because you're saying that god is greater god is magnified and more powerful than any sickness but the same person who lets the sickness talk to him or speak to him starts getting anxious and worried and even though he has the holy ghost with him and in him he has chosen to focus on his circumstances and not on the great great power of the holy spirit so now what he has done is that he is saying you know that god i don't want you to fight my battle i will fight my battle myself so he has taken on the battle himself this verse is actually a test to see where you stand on this particular issue and how are we reacting to this test let's look at the next verse uh, which is 7 philippians 4:7 it says and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through christ jesus so the question we need to ask ourselves when we are going through such trials such issues it could be anything it could be a sickness it could be some fights with the family or whatever it may be the question we need to ask ourselves is is there a peace that passes all understanding are you at peace are you at peace in your heart and in your mind remember your life goes the way of your dominating thoughts so proverbs 23:7 that says for as he thinks in his heart so is he <clears throat> as he thinks in his heart so is he proverbs 23:7 so if you want to control your life you need to control your thoughts i'll repeat if you want to control your life you need to control your thoughts so we often get so wrapped up in our needs and desires that our prayers can end up sounding like a long list of what we don't have of what we want and need without much time spent praising the one whom we are making petitions known to you know we act as if god doesn't know what we need it's like we are telling him you know we're reminding god you know we need this we need this we need this okay there is nothing wrong with asking for god's help but we should also be taking time to thank god for everything everything he has done and is doing for us so praise and thanksgiving balance the scale in your prayer life and can mean the difference between receiving and going without thank you jesus praise you jesus
So it is God who comes to give us freedom. It is God who sent his son Jesus to die for us on the cross. Why? So that we could be truly free. When Jesus said it is finished, means we are set free from all our bondages, sickness, poverty, and every other crisis or plan that Satan is trying to bring to our focus. God desires an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. This attitude of praise and thanksgiving is my commitment to God that I trust Him. I believe Him much more than my physical senses are communicating to me. So this is the power <coughs> that God has put in each one of us the day we become born again. But even though we have this power in our born again spirits, some of us have not yet tapped into it or we haven't put the switch on and therefore we haven't yet experienced victory in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, so we just move on to the next verse, which is Philippians 4, 8. So finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So here we've got a list of, of things that we should be thinking about and praising about. Okay, now we can ask ourselves, you know, in our lives, in our day to day lives, are we, what are we focusing on? Are we focusing on things which are praiseworthy, where, where we can give the praise and glory to God, or are we focusing on the media, on the news, on the gossip, on, you know, on the updates on the, you know, uh, sicknesses? What are we focusing on? Okay, because if we follow the instruction of this particular verse, then our lives would be totally different. Because all that we absorb in our minds with our physical senses, okay, can either build us or break us. So whatever we absorb in, into our minds with our physical senses, it can either build or break us. The more we focus on the world and its ways, the weaker we become spiritually. And that's why we need to keep renewing our mind through praise and thanksgiving using the word of God. So there is this awesome power in us which can defeat the devil at his game and turn each of our lives into a victorious into victory but my dear brothers and sisters god cannot unlock this power this power needs to be unlocked by you and by me there's nobody else who can unlock this power except you and me okay so the power to defeat the devil and unlock victory is inside of us but we need to put the switch on there is a deception where most people think praise is what I do after I get my prayers answered or after I get what I'm believing or praying for. But this is not true. I need to constantly and deliberately renew my mind through the act of praising and thanking God. I'll repeat, I need to constantly and deliberately renew my mind through the act of praising and thanking God. You know, brother, uh, brothers and sisters, 
just to share a small uh, testimony of mine a uh, couple of months uh, back uh, many many of you all may have known that uh, <clears throat> my job at my job at uh, nab uh, had uh, was made redundant you know so when the job was made redundant there were there were many ways that i could have responded to that redundancy there were many ways i could have you know reacted to it but all i could all i could say was thank you jesus i know that the plans you have for me are to give me a future and a hope and your plans for me are far better than the you know uh, than anybody else's plans could be so the you know my reaction my, my response to that particular situation was totally different now was there pressure to speak about the situation absolutely you know i could have i could have complained i could have complained i'm like you know why has this been done to me and you know uh, you know this is not fair you know i've got a family to look after and this and that i could have said many things but because there is you know my mind has been renewed by god's word so what was in my heart came out onto my lips saying that i thank you lord i know that you have a fantastic plan for me so that is why the renewal of your mind is very very important because if you if you don't renew your mind according to the word of god then there's no deposit in your heart and if there's no deposit in your heart of the word of god then the other deposit would be of the ways of the world so the the words of the world will be in your heart okay now were other people were the other people who were complaining about uh, about you know what happened to their job yes there were people who were complaining there were people who didn't take it so well but on the other hand i had a choice and this is the choice that i made that my source is is jesus he is the he is my provider you know and i'm going to focus on jesus my focus is going to be on jesus whatever happens i don't care it doesn't matter the the world economy doesn't matter to me i don't care what people think they are not the ones who provide for me they are not the ones who protect my family but jesus does that okay so it's a it's a perspective that we need to develop brothers and sisters to be victorious in this life <coughs> okay so i hope everything is clear till now if you can just answer in the chat that will be awesome okay great so no answers means <laughs> okay i got two yeses thank you praise god praise god okay so we'll move on to effects of praise so praise living a life of praise is is not only the most enjoyable way to live but it's also one of the most powerful ways to change your life so i'm sure all of us have seen uh, you know these uh, uh what are they called these cargo trains uh, you know the, the goods goods trains uh, they've got like almost like i used to you know actually count the carriages so once i was counting the carriages and it reached like up to like 55 or 60 carriages on being pulled by one engine okay so praise is not one of those 55 or 60 carriages okay praise is the engine is more like the engine of the train that pulls everything else along with it okay and that makes things happen your faith isn't complete without praise so colossians 2:7 i'm just going to read that out it says rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding therein with 
thanksgiving thanksgiving which means that you abound in faith with thanksgiving or in other words when you are giving thanks your faith abounds it gets it increases it becomes more plentiful it becomes more abundant so on the other side of the coin if there is no thanksgiving then there is no abounding in faith there is no growth you are stagnated so praise has a three way effect it affects you the devil and it affects god it touches everything and every part of your life likewise a lack of praise affects you in a negative way it turns the devil loose in your life and doesn't bless god we all agree that praise is good but very few hardly ever praise god or hardly ever feel responsible to praise god especially when they are emotions are at a peak or when they don't feel like it let's see what the bible has to say about praising god so in psalm 156 which is there on the slide it says let everything that hath breath praise the lord let everything that hath breath praise the lord praise ye the lord which is interesting because that means as long as we are alive we should be praising god but do we do that most of our mottos are different our motto is as long as we are alive or as long as we breathe we worry we are in fear we are anxious we are depressed and therefore this this may come as a shock to you but therefore we are praising and glorifying the enemy we are praising and glorifying satan note the psalm does not say let everyone who feels like it praise the lord it again clearly commands us to praise the lord irrespective of our feelings and emotions hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus okay so let's go to psalm 341 which is there on the slide again it says i will bless the lord at all times okay i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth his praise shall continually be in my mouth now if i ask you a question brothers and sisters how many of us wake up in the morning and we feel awesome and great and we have just opened up our eyes and we are you know praising god hallelujah thank you jesus and you know we are thanking him for all the wonderful things that he has done for us for the great day that's going that's in store for us i'm you know i'm i'm pretty much sure not every one of us feels that way because if we are honest you know most of us don't feel that great when we wake up and some of us have already gone into overdrive thinking of what happened yesterday what he said to me what she she said to me uh, who is going to pay my bills what will happen today you know we are anxious we are fearful and yes the amazing part is is we think all of that possibly in the first few seconds of opening our eyes but i'm pretty sure that no one would like to be this way we would like to wake up being happy being carefree and praising the lord and we feel that we have no control over this you know because of all the worries and anxiety it's natural to you know wake up worried we think that praise is just a response to what happens and that if everything goes right 
if everything goes right, we think we will automatically praise, praise the Lord, thank the Lord, you know. But this is definitely not the case. And that's where the problem is, dear brothers and sisters. We think too much. We are great thinkers. You know, some of us are, you know, have got PhD in thinking. We think about our past, we think about our future, we think about our children, we think about our neighbors, we think about their children, we think about jobs, our money, our health, and the list just goes on and on and on. So what we are doing is, is we are literally thinking and then talking ourselves into worry, fear, and anxiety. And then we wonder with our amazing wisdom, how we got here in the first place. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to be continuously renewing our mind with the word of God. And we can use praise and thanksgiving to change our focus on God. Now, Moving on, the Lord, you know, just the night before his crucifixion, the Lord told his disciples, let your hearts, you know, let your hearts not be troubled. In John 14, 1. You know, again, if you notice, it wasn't, it's not a suggestion. It's a, it's a command. But I was just thinking of this. I said, if, if, if I was there, you know, or we put ourselves in the shoes of the disciples when we were there with Jesus and we knew that Jesus is going to be arrested, be condemned and then crucified. And after that, you know, what's going to happen to us? You know, what's going to happen to me? What do I do? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that thought make you fearful? And then you have on the other hand, you have Jesus who's going to go through all those things and he's like, you know, just chill. Okay. You don't need to let your hearts be troubled. We would think that Jesus is being insensitive or unreasonable. Or, you know, Jesus wasn't being understanding or he wasn't being compassionate. You know, he's not, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. So there would definitely, definitely be a difference in the way that we are thinking and in the way Jesus was thinking. So let's try to understand why does our heart and spirit get troubled in the first place? It would do us good if we spend time reflecting what words we are listening to, what we are reading, what are we watching, what are we thinking, and most importantly, what are we saying? Remember Romans 12.2 which I spoke about in my previous talk on, on the first part of the series, Renew Your Mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So brothers and sisters, we live in a fallen world, okay? It seems that the ungodly are winning and getting their way out. So much of what we hear, see, is just not aligned with the word of God. I would say more than 96 or 97% of what we hear and see is not aligned with the word of God. And we have to make a deliberate effort to focus on the word of God. So this is what is happening today during this talk. You know, you all, are, you all are making a deliberate effort to focus on the word of God. Praise and thanksgiving is a great tool to help us achieve that. Achieve focus on the word of God. So praise is like a spiritual train engine that pulls your spiritual life ahead and keeps it on track to fulfill God's plan in your life. 
praise and thanksgiving renews your mind and deliberately helps you focus on god and not the circumstance when you praise and thank god you are slapping the enemy in his face and telling the mountain where to go and what to do praise is perfected through practice we need to be deliberate in our praise the more i am connected with god the more i praise and thank god for who he is and what he's done psalm 22 3 says that god inhabits the praises of his people and i want you to imagine this brothers and sisters so if if you could imagine god sitting next to you okay in in your problem in your midst if you could just imagine imagine him sitting next to you what would you be going through in your head when he is with us mountains melt like wax in his presence give god the praise and your sickness problems whatever issues you have will melt like wax thank you jesus hallelujah thank you lord in the presence of god there is fullness of joy and god gives you the wisdom he shows you what you need to do to handle the situation the enemy wants you to magnify the issue or problem but god wants you to magnify the word he wants you to taste and see how good the lord is thank you jesus praise you jesus okay so Just give me one second here. Yeah. Okay, so so praise is basically like Brother Johnson calls it the big gun of faith. Okay, you can see the slide there, no? You can see the slide there, and uh, the uh, the soldier is holding a. Uh, a rocket launcher that's called a rocket launcher on his on his uh, shoulder there and he's firing that that rocket to a to a certain target now when this when this rocket launches and it hits that target that target is totally decimated it's destroyed completely destroyed there's no chance of that target surviving the power of praise is that big gun of faith which is inside of each one of us and when you get it out the devil has to flee and you don't stop firing that gun of faith till that mountain which has been threatening you all these years has to flee get uprooted and get thrown into the sea no longer to trouble you any more with this big gun of faith you are able to trouble your trouble the devil wants to keep us from thinking about praise and thanks while we are in the process of believing because the devil knows it is my important key to my breakthrough so let's take this example of 1 peter 2:24 most of us are are aware of what what this verse is because we have used it to combat our sickness so it's it i mean it's basically it says by your stripes you were healed by his stripes sorry by jesus stripes you were healed so we are believing and confessing and the devil puts starts because once you start once you confess the word of god once you 
you know, speak it out in faith, you are not going to be, you know, the devil is not just going to sit by and say, oh, okay, uh, Brother Ryan has just, you know, used a scripture verse in faith. He's not just going to sit by and, you know, <clears throat> do nothing. He's going to start putting pressure on our thinking because he knows that right now we are in a space where he can't do anything and where he's soon going to, you know, get totally uh, bashed up. So he wants us to move into fear, doubt. He wants us to be anxious. And sometimes, rather most of the times, we don't shift gear into praise and thanks. Rather, we start dwelling on all our other problems and issues and get caught up in the plan of the devil. So the key of praise is your master key. This key will unlock the prison. It will break the chains and it will set the captives free. You can praise God for his love, forgiveness, mercy, goodness, kindness. And this can only happen, my dear brothers and sisters, is if you open your mouth and give him the praise for who he is and not for what you're going to get. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So checking our praise lives is basically checking our spiritual pulse. If we don't live lives that are constantly giving thanks and praising God, then we are not spiritually healthy. I'll repeat, if we don't live lives that are constantly giving thanks and praise to God, we are not spiritually healthy. <clears throat> okay, let's, let's now go back to uh, St. Paul in Acts 16, 22 to 30. Okay, this, this particular, uh, the, I mean, St. Paul, you know, actually never ceases to amaze me because the, the amount that he's been through. So he's, he's the, he's the, I would say he's one of the perfect role models to look at, you know, when it comes to praise and worship. Okay. So let's, let's read this. I'll just read this out. So Acts 16, 22 to 30, it's on the slide. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, so that means they were really, really, you know, given a lot of pasting, lot, lot. Then they cast them into prison and charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. So inner prison is, is something more like solitary confinement where you, where you are locked up in a very small space. You are, you are, you know, in, and, and you are, there's no light, you know, it's probably really dirty. And these guys, Paul and Silas, in, in this particular passage, Paul and Silas, they were, thrown into the inner prison and made their feast fast in the stocks. Okay. Now, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Okay. Again, let's use our imagination now. Now, each one of us are Paul and Silas and we were thrown we were first given good pasting and after that we were thrown into the inner prison or into confinement. Okay. Would we think about praising and thanking God at that point of time? Or would we be fearful and be begging and pleading the jailer, you know, to have pity on us, have mercy on us. 
So it says Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. <clears throat> so Paul and Silas just didn't do this as you know praise and worship as spiritual warfare. They weren't forcibly praising God, okay, just to get out of the problem. When they were set free, they were the chains had sort of dropped off. They didn't leave. They were actually still there praising God. And this really amazes me because imagine to what extent these guys have renewed their mind. Imagine to what extent their focus is strengthened on the word of God. So they were actually praising God because they loved him and they were worshipping him out of a pure heart. We may not feel joyful, but Galatians 5.22 says that the fruit of the Spirit is joy. If we have the Holy Spirit, we have joy. We may not feel that joy, but we can choose to lift our hands and praise God by faith. Learning to praise God, even when everything is going badly or against us will change our hearts, make us much more effective and cause our faith to abound. So moving on to the verse 27, and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. So the, the, the jailer or the keeper was looking after, supposedly looking after Paul and Silas. They basically, he was basically so frightened that he saw the doors open. He thought that all the prisoners had run away. Then he wanted to kill himself. Moving on, but Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in, and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So brothers and sisters, the power of praise opened the eyes of the jailers of the jailer to see God's glory and the jailer got saved. So the question to ask is when we are praising and thanking God do we actually experience you know the power of God or is it just another, you know, tick in the box that we just praise and worship God, you know, because, you know, that's what we do before a prayer meeting. We, you know, do praise and worship and then move on. Let me put it the other, let me put it in another way. So if you're going through some crisis in your house or at work, there's a tough boss or a loved one who's going astray and Everyone's doing exactly the opposite of what we are praying for. Now, what do you do? Where is your focus? Are you bitter? Are you angry? Are you depressed? Are you speaking the situation? If that's the case, then you are losing what God wants to give you. If you truly believe in God, you would believe his word. 
and you would be praising God and saying, devil, okay, you can show me all these things, okay, but I refuse to believe. I refuse to agree. I am going to rejoice and fill with God's love. And I will love my, I will love those who are hurting me. I will love them the way they are, irrespective of what they did or are doing to me. And this is how, my dear brothers and sisters, you use your big gun of faith. You have to keep speaking according to God's word. Praise God for who he is. What he has done for you. Don't stop. Till that mountain is totally destroyed. Just like the soldiers when they use a rocket launcher. If they miss the first time, they are, oh, we missed it. So, okay, let's pack up and go home. No. They're going to load the gun again and shoot and make sure that they hit their target because they know if they don't destroy the target, the target will surely destroy them. And that's what Paul and Silas did. Were they begging and pleading God to save them? To get them out of the prison? They were not even interested in all those things. They were interested in God's presence. They were interested in fellowshipping with God. In a they were interested in being in constant relationship. They, they wanted to have a constant connection. You know, it's just like a Wi-Fi connection that we have on our phones nowadays. Or, you know, in our house. A Wi-Fi connection. The praise that comes out of your mouth is like a Wi-Fi connection to God. Now, is this a weak or a strong connection? That's something that only you can answer. Or, you know, are the words of complaining, grumbling, bitterness, offense, are, are, you, are you speaking those words and is your Wi-Fi connected to Satan and not to God? Brothers and sisters, we need to connect to God's Wi-Fi signal. We can choose which signal we are logged into. It's just like when you go into the mall, no? there's so many free Wi-Fi's which you can get access to, right? You can log on to any of the, you know, like Woolworths or, you know, Kohl's and they have their own Wi-Fi, right? So you can choose to log in or not, right? If they don't force you to log in, it's your choice. Because the moment you logged on to Satan's Wi-Fi, then the fun starts. Then you cannot praise God. You're sitting and crying. You're in anxiety. You're full of worry. And these are the weapons that Satan uses <clears throat> to get connected to him. He can torture us with all of this. He, can, he tortures us with hatred, with unforgiveness. Fight, you know, starts fighting against our own husband, our own wives, our own brothers, our own children. And he just uses all of this strife to destroy our lives. It is we who have permitted Satan to steal, kill and destroy because we have chosen to log on to Satan's Wi-Fi. So this is no surprise. If we look at our lives, if we look at where we are in our lives today, we will know exactly whose Wi-Fi we are logged into. If you're connected to Satan's Wi-Fi, you're in trouble. But there's good news. You can definitely choose to log out of it. And you can get out from inside your born-again spirit. You can get out the big gun of faith and give God the highest praise. And it is this highest praise that will connect you to God and destroy the devil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the best place in worship is not when you're in church and, you know, Brother Vivian is playing such lovely music and we are all, you know, totally connected with the Lord. 
you know, the choir is so good and you're like, you know, if you're feeling so, you know, charged up and yes, you know, you know that the angels are with you and, you know, you can see, you know, God's glory. The best place in worship is not at that time, brothers and sisters. It is when you are falsely accused. It is when someone has wronged you or cheated you. Someone has taken something from you unjustly. They have insulted you, rejected you. That is the time we need to open our mouths and praise God for who He is and begin to enjoy His presence. We need to praise God not by a feeling but through faith. Tell God that He is much, much greater than what we have gone through. Tell God you don't care of the situation. Tell God you love Him. You know that God is with you, in you, for you. We face a lot of tough circumstances in our lives. There's no doubt about that. The world expects us to behave a certain way when problems come. You know, they want you to talk about a problem. You know, they say you'll feel a lot better, you'll feel lighter and all of that. Yep, yeah, I'm sorry, but none of that aligns with the word of God. Okay, talking about your problem doesn't align with the word of God. So if you talk about the problems, you are connecting onto Satan's Wi-Fi. Okay, then don't, so whatever seed you are planting, that is what you will, that is the fruit that you will get. God has told us to respond in a different way. To not let our hearts be troubled. It's a command. We have the option of following Jesus' words and acting on the word of God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, so I'll just give you another small testimony, brother and sisters, about uh, praise and praise and thanksgiving and you know and worship. You know how I was introduced to that. So <clears throat> this was many, many years ago when when I had uh, you know one of my my bosses who was a you know close friend of mine as well he gradually introduced me to praise and worship he taught me you know what it is to praise and worship you know so uh, when we were in chennai we used to set time aside and he used to teach me how to praise and and worship god you know to how to you know use whatever uh, you know talents god has given you so that time i used to you know I used to play the guitar and, you know, I was not, I was just learning to play the guitar. So I was not really good at it, but nevertheless, I used to, you know, we used to spend afternoons together, you know, a couple of hours, uh, just, you know, praising and thanking God, you know, for everything. And that, and that basically resulted in, in me understanding what is praise and thanksgiving, what is praise and worship, you know. It's not something that you do at a prayer meeting and then that's it, you know. You, it's not a tick in the box. It's an attitude that you need to have in every situation of your life. In everything that you do, we should be basically praising and thanking the Lord. So where I am today in my life, I can, I can with confidence say that it is because of me choosing to praise and thank God in my situation, that's why I am where I am. Okay, there was this, uh, you may have heard this testimony earlier, but, you know, there was this uh, incident where uh, Natasha and Jade had fainted in the, in the washroom. And, uh, you know, then uh, by God's grace, and, I, you know, you know I, I knew, thankfully, <laughs> I knew what I had to say. And I called out to Jesus. I rebuked the, I rebuked the sickness, uh, the spirit of infirmity. And, you know, they, they both uh, gained consciousness. And 
while we were waiting for the paramedics, you know, I put praise and worship. You know, I put, uh, you know, this song called Every Praise is to Our God, Every Word of Worship with One Accord. So that's one song that we were, that I was playing continuously, you know, on, on, the, on the speaker. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that is when these situations come, and if we have not conditioned our minds, now, thankfully by God's grace, you know, I was already in, into praise and worship. It, 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 you know, it has become more of a, more of a lifestyle rather than just, you know, an every Sunday affair. So there was, you know, that was the only thing I thought of doing at that point in time when such a situation happened. That was the only thing I thought of doing, you know. So praise God, you know, for that. And that's basically what we all need to do. That's basically what we all need to do to be victorious in our lives, you know. Because when you praise, when you praise God, you are not alone, right? God himself is with you. And when God is with you, can any sickness, does any sickness have a chance? Does any, any situation have a chance? No. So it's very powerful. I also want to stress on another aspect of praising because I know that a lot of people are struggling with this particular area. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's for, it's the area that I want to talk about is uh, praise and healing. So we often ask ourselves this question. Yeah, I, you know, I've done everything I know to do. What do I do now? Sometimes we have fought the good fight for so long that we grow weary. We have, you know, all the knowledge about healing. We understand God's will and his promises. We have, you know, confessed, we have declared, we have prayed, we have commanded, and now there's nothing else to do. Okay. But still we are not seeing the manifestation. So what do we do in such situations? Again, back to the scriptures, Jeremiah 17, 14 says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. So if you notice what's happening in this scripture, it's healing and salvation are actually follow after the praising. So if we, if we switch it around, it could read as, because Jesus is my praise, I shall be healed and I shall be saved or delivered. So my brothers and sisters, that which you praise will become your reality. What sometimes we need to do is take a step back from the situation and turn our focus on Jesus and just begin to praise him. Take our eyes away from the healing that we are so eager to get and just say, thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. You are the most high God. Just go on praising Jesus for who he is. Sometimes you just need to focus on the goodness of God. It may be for a few hours, a few days, a few weeks. And leave the battle for healing to just leave it. Don't, don't focus on the manifestation. Just praise and glorify God. 
because in the praise you will empty your heart of fears and anxieties and you will begin to hear god and that's when my dear brothers and sisters that your healing will follow the symptoms of depression fear and fear they are almost always the result of broken focus the focus that i'm talking about is focus on the lord communion with the lord the cares of this world choke the word but we need to remind ourselves that the greater one lives in us and we can give ourselves a spiritual kick start by just singing dancing clap your hands do whatever it takes to get you praising and thanking the lord again praise is deliberate focus on jesus speak words of life look beyond the issue and praise him when you praise him he is in your presence and no plan of satan can stand it has to flee we will take the example of the of the disciples and jesus in the storm you know when jesus was sleeping on the boat uh, on the pillow and there was a storm so this is in mark 4 36 to 41 i'm not going to go through this for for uh, time constraints but uh, let's imagine if we were in that storm in that boat with jesus what would be our response what would we do would we be fearful or relaxed you know what the disciples did they ran up to jesus and said in mark 438 they said master carest thou not that we perish though this took place over the course of a few minutes you know it can it can sh- show you clearly you know it can be reflective of of the lives of some believers you know we have questions sometimes you know are god don't you care that i'm sick for so long don't you care that you know i've got so much so many bills to pay don't you care that my marriage is falling apart my children are you know gone off track don't you care but my dear uh, dear brothers and sisters this kind of thinking is a serious misunderstanding because of our wrong thinking we become offended at god but if we are in love we shouldn't let this happen that offense turns to complaining it turns to criticism and then it goes on to unbelief wrong thinking leads to wrong believing and jesus made this very clear after having rebuked the wind and the waves and he said to the disciples why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith only one is as asha okay just start having the amen no, the problem was in the hearts of the disciples not in the character of god now going back to paul and silas paul and silas found themselves in prison for preaching the gospel they could have been bitter blaming each other for you know the suffering the indignity they could have been complaining murmuring you know saying god don't you care that we you know we've been caught you know your 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 top gospel preachers have been caught but no they praised him they praised him and rather than being offended they chose to just praise him in the midst of the storm and we all know what happened after that so their attitude of faith they used the big gun of faith which is praise the attitude of faith and praise released god's provision for them so the question is 
would you would you rather praise god after you have seen the manifestation or would you praise and thank god in the midst of the storm if god delivered you right now from whatever you are going through would you then sing his praises would your offense you know immediately turn into thanksgiving rather than being offended we need to exercise our faith remember god is not the problem he has given us the authority and the grace to change our circumstances whatever situation you are in choose to praise him praise will release the power of god offense never will once we know that we know that we are healed we thank god praise and thanksgiving are powerful weapons in order to speed up the manifestation of our answer that is walking by faith and not by sight so i'm just going to uh, go on to the next slide so it's basically a few reasons why we should be why we should consider praising and thanking god so these are some of them okay i'm not there are a lot there are a lot but these are just uh, you know few, i just picked up six uh, to to help us understand the importance of why we should praise and thank god so one is god himself inhabits our praises psalm 22 3 so when that happens the devil has to flee when god is in our presence you know it opens supernatural doors which which no man can shut your chains of spiritual bondage strongholds addictions are all broken second point is praise and thanksgiving is a form of sacrifice that pleases god that you will see that in hebrews 13 15 to 16 so what's a sacrifice a sacrifice is when there is pressure to do something when we don't feel like doing it and when it's uncomfortable giving praise and thanks will expand our capacity to receive more point number 3 it multiplies god's blessings in our lives so if you look at mark 6:39 to 44 again once you get time to read it please do it's a miracle of the five loaves and two fish where jesus gives thanks and everyone else saw lack jesus gave thanks and he was able to feed 5000 people that day so when we are thankful for the little we have and don't when we are thankful for the little we have and don't complain but rather bless what we have then we are blessed with abundance point 4 praise and thanksgiving renews our mind the more we praise god the more we focus on god and our mind gets renewed according to the word of god the next point is we are joyful and at peace our problems diminish as god is magnified and the sixth point is your attitude of gratitude can determine the length and duration to the destination god has planned for you so i've given the the scripture verses there when when you'll get time you can read that uh, so just to cut the long story short is when the when the israelites were were in you know when they were moving towards the promised land the actual distance uh, you know to the promised land was approximately 11 days you know on foot 
but the the israelites spent 40 years in the desert and one of the reasons for that was because they were constantly grumbling murmuring and complaining and they weren't they didn't have an attitude of thanks and praise to the lord so as you can see that can actually you know delay you from reaching your destiny if your attitude is incorrect and it's not of praise and thanksgiving it can actually delay you from reaching your destiny so just to end god is pleased so pleased when we look beyond our issues and our problems and see things through his word in the light of faith that blesses god we praise not when everything goes the way we want it but more so when it is not praise is the driving force praise and thanks will get our focus where it needs to be on god if we start praising god in the middle of our problems our problems will become so minute that we will hardly remember to bring them to god we'll be so busy praising him and thanking him for his blessings that our problems will unknowingly melt like wax before you know it and each and every one of you will be walking in victory thank you jesus praise you jesus bless your holy name hallelujah i'll just end with a, a closing prayer and then uh, in case anybody has any questions we can we can take it from there heavenly father we just want to praise you and thank you for this anointed session thank you holy spirit for touching the hearts of each and every one who's listening and who will be listening in the future thank you for helping us understand what it is to praise and thank our lord thank you for helping us understand that we need to praise god for who he is for what he has done for us and for what he continuously does for us thank you for teaching us that we need to praise god in the midst of our storm and not after we see the manifestation thank you for teaching us that when we praise and thank god that supernatural doors open for us chains of spiritual bondages are broken strongholds are broken addictions are broken thank you holy spirit for teaching us that through praise and worship to praise and thanksgiving we can renew our mind to a level that we are only focused on god and not on the situation we make this prayer through christ our lord amen thank you jesus Oh, um, amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we throw the house open now. If you would like to ask any questions, please go ahead. Everyone's going to sleep, I think. <laughs> Don't feel shy. We are all learning, brothers and sisters, in this process. We are all learning, so please ask questions. So even if even if we don't know the answer, we can you know look at it as a as a family, and we can look at it in the world, and we can help you out. Yes, right. Yes, sorry, out. the speaker got blue. Sister Tracy has her hand up. Yeah, uh, I just had a question, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, praise affects. Uh, you said praise affects you, God, and devil. 
So right. if it is in the positive, it affects um, me, right? And uh, and if it is like a lack, uh, if I uh, it is a lack of praise, then in that case it will it is like I'm glorifying the devil and it is a negative towards me. But in both these cases, uh, does it affect God, whether it's a positive praise or a negative praise? See, if you're uh, that's a good question. So in terms of in terms of the effects of praise. If you are if you are praising, so basically praising would be aligned with God's word. You are praising, you know, according to God's word. Yeah. Okay. So when you do that, you are actually blessing God, and God dwells in your praises. Yeah. Okay. If you are not praising according to God's word, okay, then that opens the door. So if you're talking about your situation, if you're, you know, you're basically, you know, talking about the negatives, then yeah. that opens the door for the devil. So you're giving authority to the devil to actually come in and steal, kill and destroy. Okay. So that a, a negative praise doesn't, doesn't in any way, you know, it won't impact God. It impacts you. Yes. Okay. So that's, so you know, it's always, it's all, whenever we are praising, that's why when we are praising, it's always, it's, it's a good practice to, to use scripture and, and, you know, praise God, read the scripture. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. yeah. So my, in fact, my question was, uh, like God is, uh, not affected, uh, whether it's a positive or negative in that sense, it was, but we are supposed to do it in the positive uh, means always positive praise only is required aligned with the word of God. Yes. Yeah. So when you're praising, it's basically through the word of God. That's what you'll be praising because the word of God will help you renew your mind. Yeah. Okay. It's only the word of God that, that can actually, you know, break those strongholds and, you know, help you overcome the current, issues yeah because yeah. Of, you know, jesus said that his words are spirit and life correct in john 6 63 so the impact on god you know when you're when you're when you're praising using scripture it's it's you know like i said god is blessed yes and he dwells in your praises but when you're apart from that if you are speaking the world then it's basically it's you giving access to the devil to, uh, to you know, steal, kill, and destroy in your life. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Anyone else? Uh, I had a question, one. Yes, brother. Can you can you hear me? Yes, brother. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in this overall session, uh, we can imply by saying that uh, by thanking God, we are appreciating the presence of God in our lives. Uh, am I right so far? So you're appreciating. The presence of God in, in every aspect your, of our life. Your, see, if you go back to the definition of praise, brother, so uh -huh. you're basically, when you're praising God, is that you uh -huh. are saying how wonderful and awesome he is. So we uh -huh. acknowledge his authority, his perfections, his mighty acts of power, goodness, uh -huh. his goodness, his mercy, and just and just all the other wonderful things about who and what God is. So yes, the presence of God is one of the aspects. Yes. But definitely, you know, when you are praising God, we, sh we so we are basically, you know, talking about God's goodness, God's kindness, God's mercy, you know, all, all the wonderful things he's already done for us and will continue doing his, uh, you know, the authority that he's given us. So it's, it's, 
it's uh, all these uh, aspects collated, which which will uh, you know which needs to be included in your praise. And of course, like you mentioned, you know that that you're acknowledging that His presence is with you. So that's that is through faith that you're doing it because you know that God is with you. Mm -hmm. Is is that making sense? Yeah, yeah. So to finish off my questions, that, that was a halfway through my questions. Okay, okay. So we, we have put forward that now we have to thank God. Okay. So mm -hmm. what about thanking people and the situations that are around in our life? Thanking people. Are you, uh, are you talking about like positively? Anybody thanking? say, for example, now thanking uh, you, for example, now you gave us a beautiful session in the last one and a half hour. So okay. thanking you for the, for the, for the session you have given, thanking my parents, thanking for the people around, thanking for the friends that I have. So yeah. is that aligning with thanking God as well? Yeah, you're, are you thank, you're thanking God, right? For when you are, when you are having a conversation, when you are having your uh, pray, praise and thanks with God, are you, uh -huh. are you telling God, look, uh, you know, thank you for my parents. Thank you for my friends. Are you telling him that? Or are you, do you want to thank your par your parents and your friends sort of directly? Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling him, obviously I'm telling him, but I, so in instances like now I want to thank you. Okay, thank you for yeah. this beautiful session. Yeah. So so even that aligns with thanking God, if I'm not wrong. Th that aligns with you thanking me because, see, because it's out of love, right? Because you love God mm -hmm. and that God's love is in you. So that God, that love overflows and you thank me. Yes. Okay. So thanking me is, is, I mean, it's fine. You're talking about whether it aligns with God. Yes. If it, yeah. So if it's like I said, if, if you are rooted in God's, God's word and in, you know, and you are exercising that love that, that, uh, you know, that, that is in you because of the Holy spirit, then yes, then it is aligned with God's word. If you thank me, but this, this particular uh, session was okay. purely to praise and thank God. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. Sir. Praise God. Uh, brother Ryan, can I please uh, add, uh, not add, but give, you know, when I praise God, yep. I use one chronicle chapter 29 verses 10 mm. and it say that lord god of our ancestor may you be praised forever and ever you are great powerful glorious splendid and majestic yep. everything in heaven and earth is yours and you so this is what praising me praising god what he did for us what is going on that is praising and also in psalms 103 verses 1 to 5 it says praise the lord my soul all my being praise his holy name praise the lord my soul and not forget how kind he is so i thanking him for forgive all my sin thank you lord for my thank for heal all my sickness and disease thank you lord forgive me from all destruction and disgrace and bless me with your love and mercy Thank you, Lord, for fill my life with good things, so that I, so that I stay young and strong and eager. So that's two of the praising that we should praise in our prayer before we even start anything. And that's what that's my personal praising God. I use this before. Uh, that's my praising and thanking God. Praise God. Praise God, sister. Yes. So. That's a that's a really wonderful example of how to actually praise God using the scriptures. Uh, look, the Psalms are the the Psalms are you know really wonderful in terms of if you want to uh, praise and thank God, you can use the use the Psalms. Uh, definitely use the Psalms, but just be careful in terms of the tense that you are using because uh, we are uh, you know in the new testament now and you know jesus has already died for us so uh yes. but yeah but the way sister you you said that you said that that prayer using both the one chronicles and the psalm 103 that was really that was a fantastic uh, example i think that's a really yes. good example thank you sister 
So everything in the Bible, it's already been done. Jesus is already done. So everything we just put thank you at the front. That's how I see it. That's when I'm, when I'm praising and thanking. <laughs> exactly. Thanking God for healing. I'm already healed. Thank yes. you, God. You already blessed me. Thank okay. you, God. You already supply for me everything. So we don't beg, we don't ask, we don't anything. But we just thanking God that we already receive it. Yes, that's correct. In fact, uh, now that you said that, the Holy Spirit reminded me. Uh, in the uh, in the white book, you have, uh, you know, if if uh, the, the JCLM white book, God's mm. promises, which are there. You know, that's another wonderful way yeah. of praising and thanking God. Because there are, there are uh, I think, around four or five pages of them printed. Uh, so if you want to, you know, use that, and it's, a, it's all, all from the scripture. So if anybody wants to use that to praise and thank God, yes, definitely. But just remember that the praising is out of faith, okay? It needs to come out of faith. Yes. Because anything that is not faith is sin. Romans 14, 23. Praise God. Praise God. So I'm just searching for the page number. Just give me one. Page second. 70. 70? Okay. Yeah. It says, thank you, Jesus, that your yes. presence goes with, goes me, with me. And you give me every, message. thanking, Fantastic. every, every, every phrase, every verse is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's what we need to do. Thanking God, everything. Uh, Sister Sam. Yes. And Brother Ryan, uh, it's really good when you are in a joyful situation or a situation where you wake up and you are just ready to go to work or things like that, that we always want to praise and thank God because the bottom line is we want to receive. That, mm -hmm. is, that is one of the main reasons why you are praising and thanking. Sorry to say, it may be sounding rude, but that is what the whole thing is. We are actually not thinking that when our situation is bad, when there's a storm, when the, like Silas and Paul, they were in the prison and they were in the dungeon. You know what that means? Then the inner prison means that uh, it was all stench, filth, one room where there may be so much of stench that you can't even sit there. And they were chained, their hands and legs, and everyone was there in their lower cell. The thing here is the biggest example that Brother Ryan gave, and it could have just been this one example to explain to us that praise and thanks is not when you are on top of the world or when someone does something good to you. It is when you are in that condition, that condition where you yourself can't bear to look at the situation. That is when God comes and takes you out of that situation. So in the situation, <laughs> Paul focused not on the surroundings or the prison. He had a concert there, a concert in, at midnight with all the prisoners, just praising, thanking God. Can you imagine having a concert at midnight in a prison where it is stench, filth, dirt? So that is when we have to understand in our life, when we are undergoing a situation and that situation may be at your own home, don't go too far with your children, with your husband, wife, whatever. You may be thinking you're in a bin, but you are not thanking and praising God. Means that is when you are not actually asking God to come and take over. God came and take over. God dwells in the praises of his people. So once you understand that he is here with you, you need nothing else. We're not praising God for what he has done for us. He has done so much that we can't thank him in this life. We are praising God for who he is and how much love he has and how he has created us and how he has kept us in his victorious right hand. You don't get victory by praising God. The victory is already won. You already have the victory. It is that you're not claiming it. As you rightly said, I think Sister Tracy asked that question so well that uh, who are we praising? Are you praising the person who's giving you worry by worrying? Or are you pra praising the person who is taken you out of the situation, but you're still focusing on the situation. So that is where praise matters. The whole uh, crux of praise and thanksgiving is when you are in a situation and you're able to thank God. That is why it is a sacrifice. That is why it's called a sacrifice. 
Lord, I don't care where I am, but I want to thank you for who you are and what you are. That is when the chains, the bonds of Paul and Silas, they were broken. Angels come, angels come and take over. They lift you up. Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat was under three big armies. There were three big armies. He was under depression. But God just told him, you just go take your position and praise. So he has a praise team and a thanksgiving team. So that is what we have to understand in praise and thanksgiving is, am I praising and thanking God for every breath that I take, which I'm meant to do? Mm -hmm. Am I praising and thanking God in the mess that I am in? Don't thank him for the mess. He's not, he's not putting you in the mess. You, are, you put yourself in the mess. You see, coming every Sunday and drawing from it and not actually putting it into, into practice, all the effort that Brother Ryan has put in will go down. So we have to take this lesson now. Yes, Lord, whatever situation I'm in today, I am thanking you because you are there in it with, in it with me. If it's a storm, you are in the storm with me and you've kept me in the eye of the storm. That is so important for us to understand. And let me tell you, each one of us is in a situation at the moment. So it is so beautiful to understand that God dwells in the praises of our people. It is not only in good times that we want to praise him. It is in the times which is the stormy times. Okay, so that's all that I want to contribute. Anything else anyone wants to ask? Yes, I'd, I'd like to say something. Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, it's Eleni here. Can you yes, hear me? Sir. Yes, sir. yes, yes. Oh, I just want to thank you, Brother Ryan and all of you. It's just amazing, very precious every Sunday. It's amazing as it was last Sunday um, and the Sunday before, just amazing. Uh, I'm not sure if this has uh, some relevance, but it's like um, Brother Francis saying, it's when, when you're feeling um, down or not grateful or thankful. I, I was, uh, see my partner, he, um, he likes to, I don't know, spend a lot of money on some of his friends and sometimes he likes to uh, take them out and, and not me. And I was wondering and I was feeling um, left out. And another time he had gone out and he, he won some money and he, he just gave me um, a little bit like maybe $20 and I didn't understand why I was feeling like that and I wanted to get to the bottom of it and I knew I had to thank the Lord and praise him but I just didn't know how I know I didn't understand why it wasn't the money so much I don't care about that it's it's not about the material so I just got I went into my room I went on my bed and I just begged and cried out to the Lord to show me why what was going on here and the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I wasn't thanking and praising um, not only God, but my partner who gave me $20, that I had to be grateful and thankful for that. And that was my lesson. And as soon as I was grateful and so happy, it was such a switch in my mind and in my heart. I thought, my goodness, how silly of me. Who cares? This is amazing. It's the Lord's money anyway. It's the Lord's grace. And then as soon as I saw my partner not as someone um, bad or someone that I, I was put, like, I felt like he was an idol or something like that. As soon as I let go, in the next couple of days, he started giving me money and paying more attention and just being more uh, present with me. So then I realized it was me. It was me that I, I had unconscious resent resentment or I wasn't... Um, believing or trusting in what I already had and that I don't need any extra and just to be grateful and, and thankful and praising. And as soon as I start reading the Psalms or uh, some prayer books I have, they are amazing. And I start to cry because I start feeling the shame. How could I have left him so, I uh, went so far as to not realize how much is already given us and keeps giving us giving us and the agape love so yeah it's in that moment when i wasn't grateful and praising i started to see the difference but it, if i didn't pray I, I couldn't it was the holy spirit his grace his mercy that showed me because it doesn't matter how much i repeat this to myself how many it just didn't and sundays like this and with sam's Bible class, it's the, it's the way I grow and the seed is just flowers and blossoms. And I don't realize until I'm, I'm just so happy and hungry for the word. I just can't wait for Sundays. And I actually missed the beginning because I was having lunch with my family. So I would like 
if there's a way I can uh, have another, if there's how I receive the recording. I don't know too much about technology, but I just am so grateful and thank, thankful. I'd like to hear all of this again. There's just so much, there's so much to this. So yeah, thank you so much, brothers and sisters. God bless you all. Thank you, sister. Uh, Praise God, Ellen. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll arrange to uh, send you uh, the link. If you could, uh, maybe if you could uh, send me your mobile number, or or if Sam could send me your mobile number, or we could forward the link to Sam because it would be on YouTube after the meeting's over. So you can you know go through the beginning of the talk again. We'll forward it to Sam. Sam is on. Yeah. Uh, Melissa is on our list, so she can okay, okay. send it to her. Oh, thank Fair you, enough. thank you. Okay. Many options. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa. Your testimony. Melissa. iPad. Sorry, who was that? Helen. Helen, is it? Ellen. 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 Uh, Ellen. Ellen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your wonderful testimony. Because look. When you come and give a testimony, you're glorifying God. And, you know, we are also learning because, you know, situations like this at home, like when you've taken the Lord and you've uh, gone to the Lord and how the Lord has solved your problem. It is so amazing that you've come and given it to us because we all go through these little circumstances and they can become into mountains. You see, it's you took control of it and you destroyed the mountain and now you are in the glory of God. Thank you, Ellen, so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Please be free to ask or share testimony. And thank you, Brother Ryan, for such a wonderful teaching. Praise God, Brother. Praise God. Yes, amazing, Brother Ryan. Thank you, Sister Sam. You know, another important thing I would like to stress on is uh, I was just uh, having uh, a discussion with Brother Francis a couple of days back, uh, just in terms of uh, the, the the talks that we do every Sunday. Uh, so it's it's important to listen to these talks, yes, but it's also important to you know make notes, uh, you know, uh, at least on what touches you the most, and then you know, dwell on it on the scripture verse and meditate on that and then implement that in your life. Because otherwise, uh, you know, it's just a matter of you listening to the talk, uh, giving your attendance and then, you know, it, it just fizzles out. It's, it's practically impossible to retain what you heard over one and a half hour, uh, you know, if you don't go through it again or if you've not made notes and then revise those notes and try to implement it somewhere. I'm not saying you have to do the whole talk, but at least one or two points if you have noted down, uh, you know, and then use that, use those points and then emphasize and focus on those points and work on those points in your, in any area of your life. Um, that will really be a blessing to you. Really be a blessing. Yes, God.
Sister Sam, do you want to share any testimony of yours? Thank you, Francis. I will. Thank you, Francis. I will. So on, I think on Saturday or Friday, I went to the Melbourne Zoom to did uh, the my testimony on uh, Vietnam being established. So uh, when I spoke, uh, there's a few people that uh, heard the story how poor the people were. And there was uh, one sister, Belle, she's from UK. So she, um, she asked for my number and the account. So the thing is this morning, she, uh, I call, she called me and I called her back because the name, she couldn't connect it. But amazingly, two days back, so uh, a few days ago, I meant to go in a, and did a testimony. So I just didn't want to go in because just, uh, I don't know, I didn't go in and then I couldn't sleep for two nights. The Holy Spirit was prompting me to go in. I said, okay, I will go in. So Friday I went in, but because I didn't go in, um, so two days back before I came in, Sister Bell told me that her husband been doing business in Dubai and they haven't paid the, um, him for 10 months. And somehow that day, so two days back, Brother Johnson called her and asked her how everything was going. So she didn't want to say anything about because we don't talk about problem. But somehow Brother Johnson knew and then he just called and she just said shortly that, the, um, that the, they've been doing business and the money hasn't been paid. So he made a prayer and uh, two days afterwards, the money went into the account. Now, the day that I went into the testimony uh, and to testify and, and tell Brother Johnson, Johnson that uh, Vietnam has already been established, she heard the story and she went and told her husband that she wanted to send the money to the poor children who doesn't have shoes and all the leprosy people and everything. And her husband wasn't convinced, but she said, listen to the testimony. So now she's um, sending money to, to these children. And, you know, God worked so amazingly that if I go in a day before, uh, but she received the money and she wanted that money to send it to Vietnam to all these poor children. And, and, and Brother Johnson made the prayer and everything and the money came and then it was just the right perfect time. And then just to see that God worked everything just the way, you know, just we cannot even describe, we cannot even, you know, so amazing that he put everything together, everything worked together for good when you loved him. He just showed the, the step and people all over the world, you know, we don't know each other and now we are all become like a family and helping each other out and, and it's just so amazing. Yes, so it's so amazing, Brother Francis, to, you know, just to walk with God and just to, you know, every day when we listen to the teaching like this, even though we, we go through it and, and now it's just continuously building up our, our faith and continuously reminding us to, to, re, to renew our mind all the time. So, yes, that was my testimony. Praise God. What a wonderful testimony. Of yeah. the glory of God. Yeah, what a glory thank, of God. Thank you, Jesus. So Vietnam uh, mission is coming up soon. Yes, yes. We're just waiting for the, the border to open and we go. But we just let Papa go to Africa first. Yes. It's already, yeah, it's already been established. Everything has been established now. So there'll be like over a thousand people waiting for us in Vietnam already. And then... Um, and last uh, Sunday, the priest uh, also baptized another 125 people. Isn't praise it amazing? God. Yeah, praise, praise God. God. Praise God. That's amazing conversion of souls, bringing all yes. the souls into the yes. kingdom of God. Yes, and we get to be part of it to help them out, isn't it? God used each one of us in different ways to help one another, to lift one another up. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. 
it's like you know we have come together to know god more to love god more and we want to understand like so if uh, like brother kevin asked uh, about thanking people you have to have an attitude of gratitude at all times we don't thank people only for what they've done to you we also thank the lord for bringing those people in our lives because those people have, have come into our lives our parents our friends even the talk that brother ryan gave they've come into our life because god has placed them in our life so they are in our life so we thank god first because jesus whatever he did he looked up to the heavenly father first thanked him and after that he the miracles took place the multiplication took place. so whatever uh, little we have we thank the lord in that and then he multiplies it as brother ryan has already brought so an attitude of gratitude takes you to an altitude that is close to god you are always above the storm then brother yes. kevin yes that's why he said thank god in everything yeah. in everything Amen. But only when we go through the storms and the tests and the trials, that's when we, that's when we, um, that's when we see our potential, and that's how we we build our faith, and that's how we we build our house on the rock. You know, without going through all these tests, we will never be, we will never never pass the test of how to be patient, of how to not to argue and and not to be in. get offended or anything only when you pass the test then you then you will never fall back to the person who you used to be yes thank you sister this is to natasha is she not there today i'm here brother is god sister you have so much to share No, no. I, I, I usually do have so much to share. I was, uh, um, I'm recovering from a, you know, a bad throat. So I have recovered actually. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Healed. Yeah, already healed. I'm so already, already healed. I'm already healed. Yes. I'm already healed. So now take the corresponding action and talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know the thing is, um, I wanted to share, um. this incident that happened last week and uh, uh, you know it's not about us doing anything but uh, probably the environment in the house um, because of you know we we are in constant state of praising i mean ran will take the guitar and he would you know praise at times he just sits and he you know he's praising and when he's praising on top in the bedroom i'm singing down so that i can hear the guitar or we keep playing uh, you know music in the house and we thank and praise it every every um, you know uh, instance we are thanking and praising the lord so sometime last week that was monday last uh, last week we got a, uh, a call from my son's school and we were asked to take him home because um, he was looking too well we had sent him to school and he looked perfectly fine to us there, there was nothing wrong with him but uh, in class the teacher thought that he wasn't looking too well and according to her she w- he was coughing so he was immediately sent um, to uh, you know the sick bay in school and uh, that is the time zephania heard uh, he heard the 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 office people uh, calling me up and saying that i think he needs to do a covid test now for a uh, for a 7 year old boy i mean after listening to you know in school how they talk, you know they prepare them for this the they keep talking about covid at home we barely talk about it but the first thing he said was thank you jesus i do not have covid amen yes. god yes. amen so, so he wow. was very he was very confident because by the time ryan picked him up we were in the car waiting for him because um, until the covid test was done he was not allowed to uh, go back to school so he was uh, why when he was coming back when i looked at him i was just wondering what did the teacher see i mean whether he was coughing he looked perfectly fine and then he comes and he sits in the car he's very confident there is no fear um and i'm like are you all right zephina he said yeah he's like i don't know why they asked me because i know that covid doesn't like little kids <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh, we have we had to anyway take him for the test and um, we uh, we know of couple of people um, who went for the covid test and it has it had been a very uh, um uncomfortable um, 
experience, especially for the children, because they, uh, you know, because of the bud that they use and they shove it right up the, you know, nasal passage and into yes. back, right back into the throat. So it can be painful at times. So um, we made an agreement, prayer. In fact, uh, we loudly said, we lose angels right now. We also said, Spirit of the Lord is upon the technicians and God's favors upon Zephaniah. We lose angels right now to guide the, technic the technicians to be, uh, you know, very gentle. And, um, you know, and when he went there, when he came back, you know, immediately I wanted to look at him and, you know, to see whether he, uh, he took it well. He came home very confidently and he's like, oh, it just tickles. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, I could just see, uh, you know, God's glory working in our lives mm -hmm. because um, even in the midst of a storm, you know, if we were or not in the world, with the word COVID, I'm sure as parents, we would have been very concerned and uh, very fearful. And also, you know, we would be talking about the situation and about how bad, uh, you know, the, the technicians can be because they come, they go through so many patients and, you know, they don't go to see, they're, they're not very sensitive about uh, people. I mean, they're just yeah. doing their, their job. But um, in this case, we were, we were very confident. In fact, we, we found it silly that we had to go for a COVID test because Zeph and I keep saying every germ virus disease that touches my body dies instantly. So there was no way that COVID could even touch him. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, so, so I mean, this is, this is what praise does. This is what uh, it, uh, you know, as you go on praising every day, whether you're in a good situation or bad situations, again, like depositing, um, you know, uh, that goodness uh, in the bank, in the heavenly bank, and at the right time, it brings you into a state of rest. Yes. So whatever the situation is. So that's what I wanted to share. Uh, so yeah, I took a while, but yeah. <laughs> and praise God. <laughs> as yes, I yes. speak, as I speak, I'm, I, I, I think, I'm, I'm not, I think, I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong word again. I'm perfectly fine. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. it's also God. the environment at home the child picks up, you know. Yeah, so yeah. He's so used to the praise and you know always talking about God, reading the word of God, confessing the scripture. So yeah. They are already warriors. Any sickness come, they know that the power within yeah. them is greater than the power of this virus and any sickness. Amen. Yes, yes. Yes. We praise God for our children who are blessed and anointed. Amen. They already Amen. know. They already have the weapon, the word of God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Uh -huh. So your healing is complete. And, yes, uh, yes, my healing is complete. Yes. Praise That's God. The, the, the finishing was the testimony. So Yes. 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 <laughs> you took the corresponding action. <laughs> I took it. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. You know, that <laughs> You need, yes. you need the right company. You need to be surrounded with godly people who will lift you up at any situation. Praise God. That reminds me of Psalm 1, 1, 2, 3. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so when you're feeling run down and sometimes you think you cannot praise alone, you can yes. always call, you know, uh, yes. any one of us. And I'm Correct. sure we will be in a situation to, not a situation, we will join you to, yes. battle, to battle your unbelief, to battle your enemy. Praise God. Yes, yes. And as Brother Ryan said in his teaching that, you know, whether we are happy or sad, whatever, we have to deliberately praise God. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. In the situation. But when we keep talking about our problems and this and that, if yeah. we don't come to know, actually, we are praising the devil. Absolutely. Every time we speak about our problem, problem, what are we doing? We are praising the devil. Yeah, that's so true. See, that's why we have to make a decision. No, I'm going to praise God in this situation, not for the situation, but in the situation. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. That's so good. In fact, last night, um, as I was battling this, um, uh, the throat situation, because I, uh, of course, I had already commanded and I, yeah. and I was, um, you know, the thing is, for the past few nights, I've been praying. I have not been praying. Sorry, I've been uh, playing the, uh, you know, the the healing scriptures the whole night. Yeah. So it just goes on, and as soon as you get, you know, like even at times, you just get up in the middle of the night, and you hear, you know, it's like God speaking to you. Yeah. It's like, and you know that your your spirit is being fed con continuously with those healing scriptures. 
and you get Correct. you know the kind of sleep that you get and when you get up so refreshed in the morning yes it's like you don't even need an excuse that you know to praise you just praise thank okay. you jesus for this amazing day praise god excellent sister excellent yeah thank you jesus thank you jesus i'm sure many people want to share even the little thing that you've learned or something that has happened you would like to glorify god and praise him and thank him it would be so nice to hear because we are learning look a uh, whole mm-hmm. night putting on the scripture listening to the scriptures <laughs> it's like you're feeding your spirit 24/7 isn't yeah. that amazing yeah in fact you don't need to have a testimony or uh, of what you have seen yeah. you can have a faith testimony because you've learned so much over these past few weeks how to handle different situations using the word of god you can always give us a faith testimony how you're using you know the teaching that you received how are you using the teaching in your life it could be just one point as ryan mentioned earlier use just one or two points yeah. i'm sure many of you are using it cast your burdens renewing your mind having a relationship with god speaking in tongues i'm sure everybody has already you know using exercising their gift of tongues i think that's really important and if you haven't yet we are we are waiting for you to you know to help you out so do get in touch if you would like to exercise your gift of tongues brother max has lifted his hand i'll just kada unmute yourself actually it's me natasha <laughs> it's lona hi lona max and i are listening together hi hello, hello everyone praise god praise, praise jesus god. It's good to hear your voice sister lona yes good to hear everyone too this is just a small testimony because we are talking about thanksgiving yes. it just happened on friday like um i heard one of the melbourne teaching not teaching some testimony just few days ago how that lady was um, uh, going to do some uh, work in a home she had called some trades people and before that she made a prayer so i we were uh, getting someone on friday just to help us with the gardening so i said to max come let's make a prayer that that person will be safe and all that so we i i said a prayer spirit of the lord is upon that person god's favor is on him thank you jesus that your hand is upon him keeping him safe keeping us safe you know and he was doing his work he felt thirsty and he asked for water i gave him a glass of water and he was maybe he drank it in such a haste it went in his windpipe when he went in he was so badly choked he couldn't breathe and but i didn't panic so i just tapped his continue to tap his back and it took um quite a few seconds for him before he could get back his breath you know and after that i just thought to myself it was the prayer definitely god's hand was on him for him to get back otherwise it would have been such a like terrible thing for someone to you know when work is going on in your house someone's come to do the work and you know that person something goes wrong with that person so i just want to thank and praise god that his hand was really upon that person that came to you know help us out with the gardening and he was okay after a few minutes praise yes praise wow. god thank praise you jesus god. thank you pa- power of prayer praise power god of prayer. he he choked so badly it, it was quite scary but for some reason yeah i didn't panic and it was all okay anyway all glory to god yes all glory to god god yes yeah the some reason is because of the prayer the angels were yeah, keeping you at peace yes yes they yes. were keeping you at peace that Correct. you yeah yes yes it was a prayer because then later on i was reflecting and i said it was that prayer that kept me at peace you know yes yes, yes. wow praise yes. god praise god yes i just wanted to share that thank you thank so you. much thank, thank you so you. much praise god I think brother Raina wants to share something now. <laughs> yeah. Hello, uh, Sister Anisha. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Sister Anisha, your uh, voice is not clear. Uh, is it? Uh, should I use earphones? One minute. I'll come back. It's a bit muffled.
Yes. Yeah. Uh, praise God. As Sister Lona was uh, sharing a testimony, I suddenly remembered a small testimony which happened on Friday morning. Um, thanks be to God. Actually, we were uh, we dropped children and uh, we were on our way to office. And um, at the junction, while we are going out of school and we have to take uh, this uh, Bangarabi road, in that junction, usually um, no one uh, crosses um, suddenly because it's kind of a T, T junction. And suddenly one uh, um, man, he was riding a bicycle and um, Reiner saw him coming, but Reiner thought he would be going um, straight because usually you, you cannot make a L shape um, like you should, uh, usually you walk like how you are um, walking, crossing the road and on the footpath, that, that's how the cycle, cyclists should go. So he was assuming that and he was talking to me, but suddenly, praise God, he took a L turn and he just came in front of our car and Reiner Ha had not put the brake and it was just um, half feet I could say that I just screamed Reiner like this and when he heard just me screaming Reiner because I saw that man he was coming in front of a car he was riding his bicycle so Reiner didn't see anything but he just applied the brake so we just want to thank God that Lord has saved us from a big mess that morning. Usually, of course, in the morning we pray in tongues and we say all the prayers on our way to office. Um, but that day uh, we hadn't started saying, we were just dropping and we were out of, out of the school to that way. But even though then God has uh, showed his abundant mercy on us and Whatever we have deposited earlier, angels came at the right time and thank God for that, um, that God saved us from everything and saved that man also and we blessed him and uh, praise God. He just looked at us and he came to know that he was wrong, but we just blessed him and we moved forward. Praise be to God. Okay, Sister Sam, I think uh, there's no one else to share anything. So we've all had a wonderful time and uh, with the Lord and the beautiful testimonies are touching us and making us realize that the Lord's hand and divine intervention is there all the time in our lives, whether it be for us to save someone else or to save us even. So our Lord is always there and when we come, we share, we draw so much that the rivers of living water are flowing in our hearts. And these rivers of living water will go and bless others now. Let's be a blessing to someone else now. So thank you everyone for coming, sharing, drawing. And God's divine love is the aroma that we take, the fragrance that we take from here every Sunday. So thank you once again. God bless yes. all of us. Thank you. Oh, brother Francis. Oh, bless us. Thank you, Brother Francis. Thank you, Brother uh, yes. Joanna from USA wants to mention, she wants to give a small testimony. Yes, please go ahead. Joanna? I'm Joanna's mom. Joanna is sleeping right now. Oh, okay, okay. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Natasha. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me for this. And... Um, I have spoken to Natasha a few months ago. That was my first call to Natasha. And that's when she had, uh, she had given me a whole understanding about how to pray with the word of God and uh, how to make a vision, how to stand by it. And I did several times uh, during this process, all these months, and she lifted me up all the time, uh, pointing out exactly where I was going wrong. And um, 
the vision that we had made together, me and Natasha, about my family being in the garden and being a blessing and uh, being warriors for Christ is the vision that I am still holding on to. And I believe I've already uh, received it. And uh, I thank and praise God for it. Um, I was also thanking at that point of time where my family was at. I was the only one who was receiving the word and um, really struggling to believe it. Uh, that was in the month of uh, June, Natasha, or May? Month of May, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it was May. It was a little uh, end of April or May, yeah. Yeah, so it was the month of May, about the beginning of May. And uh, in the beginning of May, uh, where I was at, where I was learning the word of God, trying to understand, I was making mistakes and I was trying to lift myself up again. Natasha was helping me and, you know, constantly she was in touch with me and she's still in touch with me. But um, I kept going through praising and thanking God for everything. Um, today, where I am uh, is at, um, I was not on these months. It was, it was quite a roller coaster actually. Uh, Joanna was born again. And then uh, my, then it was my, I was my son. So um, praise God by Natasha's counseling and um, uh, teaching me the scripture. Um, uh, my, my, my son has actually uh, 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 reading, uh, understanding the scriptures and reading the word of God. And, um, my family, I was, um, uh, that point of time, my family was, we were not praying together at all. But today, praise be to God and thank you, Jesus, that my family, we read the booklet, a wide booklet, page number 70. We read those promises every day. Praise God. Praise wow. God. <laughs> like literally, all of praise us. God. And today we are uh, praying together as a family. And it is um, and it is not a compulsion for everyone. We all come together. We have a decide, uh, fixed time. And that's why I missed the beginning part of the um of the teaching today but um, thanks be to Jesus and that is where Natasha keeps saying keep thanking God uh, sharing you need to have patience and um, that was my biggest learning that patience praising God and thanking God um, works wonders Amen thank you Jesus Amen 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 yes. Sister just one question yes uh, what was the like before the teaching and after the teaching um, mm -hmm. How did you, like who? Where, what was the correction that you applied? The correction was um, first thing I had to believe the word of God. Although I knew these scriptures, but I had to, I had to believe the word of God that yes, this is possible. When I am seeing a vision, I have to hold on to it. I cannot. Uh, it's it's like I cannot abort my um, dream or vision. So I had to uh, keep, the, Natasha kept saying me, just keep thanking God that you've already received it because you've received it, you're thanking God for it. Just keep visualizing, just keep praising God. And I used to forget to thank God and praise God all the time. And then when I started thanking God, thank you, Jesus, that all my family, I had a, I had a very strong desire to learn, listen to the word of God all day earlier in the, the beginning months. But the, my family was not ready for it. So they would find very annoying. You know, why is she always listening to the word of God? My husband would get so annoyed with me in those days that he would say, please, I can't, we have better things to do in life. We have a lot of work to be done. We have this to be done, that to be done. And, um, but, but when, but I get, when I went to uh, explain him that let's, uh, let's, this is the power of the word of God. This is alive and active. He would say, don't teach me all these things. I know all these things. But then I, then I learned that I had to keep my mouth shut. I cannot make things change. I cannot do anything with my words or with my efforts. That's when I, started, I, kept my, I decided to keep my mouth shut and uh, just thank and praise God that my husband prays with me every day. Praise God. Praise God. So praise God. Thank you. Yes. That's what I wanted to know. And it is so beautifully explained that the change is not in someone else. The change is in us. The change has to be done in us. You know, when we do the correction upon ourselves and use the word of God, that is when we see the change taking place in someone else. So that is a really, really beautiful testimony. Thank you, Sister Natasha, for um, making a born again and making a live a victorious life. Thank you, Sister Natasha. And God, all glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, maybe Joyce is giving us a testimony now. Thanks, Cheryl. All glory to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Cheryl.
Hello. Yes, Sister Jessie. Uh, yeah. Can I uh, just uh, share something? Please go ahead. Yeah, I just want to uh, give God the highest praise and the greatest worship because um, you know what uh, He has done into my life. Um, it's true, Sam. Actually, I want to thank Sam. He, he, your God, God's gift to me for teaching me uh, uh, to learn the word of God and uh, studying it and, and then believing and confessing it. So uh, since I've known Sam, um, uh, she, she, she always sends me every day the Bible verse and reflections and the, all the promises that God um, uh, wants to give us in our lives. So I just learned that it's, it's just a matter of uh, believing and, um, and um, uh, confessing it in your life that you will have the blessings. And the praise, I, I believe, is a password for blessings from God. So um, it's just come out naturally, natural for me now to praise God and thank God in everything. Uh, what, no matter what the situation, I, I learned to um, believe in the word of God, his promises, not in the situation or the circumstances that I was in. Uh, like like, like for last, mon last Monday morning, um, I think I've shared it in the Living Word group. Um, I, I was in the hospital. I work in Fairfield Hospital as a nurse. I was called at 3 o'clock in the morning. And then uh, as soon as I got here to do some emergency operation for a patient, um, my phone uh, rang and then a oh, message, my sister messaged me from the Philippines saying my mom was rushed in the hospital because of uh, she couldn't breathe. Uh, she has, uh, you know, uh, some uh, serious kidney failure. And then uh, there's no relief. At uh, that time, she's not getting any relief because the only relief is dialysis. But there's no uh, staff highly trained at the time. It's 12 a.m. in the morning, uh, Philippine time, and three o'clock here in the in the in Australia. So I was at work, but you know the first thing um, I want to do is I open my. My, 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 my mobile and just got in, and get into the word of God. And then, you know, the, the, the words that, uh, that he gave me, he gave to me, uh, that the mighty hand of God is upon you. You are going to be okay. I don't know. This um, is a one to two pages that I've read, but these only two sentences that really stand out and and then it's just it's like a conviction from my heart in the inner deep of my heart that really is strong these words and then um of course i had to do my job because um i was called for emergency but even if i'm doing something my mind keeps praising and thanking god for all these words that she that he revealed to me at the time. And I was just praying, uh, thanking him that his, uh, that his pure and healthy blood will circulate in the ailing organism of my mom. So that's all my prayer is all about, just thanking him for, at the time, I already claim healing. At that time, I'm al I already claim all will be well in my mom. So, you know, um, after I finished work, 6.45, I went to Cabramata. I, I found a church there, the uh, sacred, uh, Mount Carmel. It's open. So I just went there. I just want to be alone. I didn't want to go home straight away. I just want to just stay in the presence of God and just continue praising and thanking Him in whatever situation my mom, you know, uh, is in and then um, while I was um, praying, my 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 phone uh, 
rang again and then my brother told me that mom is already in the diocese. Someone came to uh, give help to her and all that. Um, you know, the, the um, health system in the Philippines is not like here. Even if you have money or especially if you don't have money, it's hard to get a medical treatment there right away. So it's really, you know, uh, you really uh, have to trust God for everything. Uh, uh, if you have sick relatives there or sick family, you have to always uh, pray for them that uh, God is always with them and protected. And then um, the favor of God is upon people who will help them and all that. So it's, it's really not just a matter of um, a, ma a money problem over there. And also because of COVID, people are really uh, not um, are really uh, scared to look after sick, especially sick patients, because they're scared that they will get some virus from them. So that's what's uh, happening. So um, to make the story short, my mom got, um, uh, I would say, uh, recovered from that uh, uh, episodes. And then um, when I uh, rang that afternoon of Monday, my, my brother said, oh, she's full of life. She's, uh, she's full of life. She's happy and all that as if nothing happened. I said, how could that be? It's the Lord. It's you, Lord. So I keep praising again. So the whole week I was in that um, grace of thanking God and praising God because, um, you know, in the Bible said, if you call in the name of Jesus, it's Romans 10, 13, you will be saved. It's not that every time you ask for help, God will give, but I know that um, he has ways, he has purpose, he has a uh, plan for all the things that he gave to us. And especially if you ask or intercede for, your, for someone, uh, God will give it to you. So I just want to give, talk, give this testimony and talk to you. Um, I don't usually talk but this time I want to give praise and honor to God because it is him it is him who you know who um, increases my faith and my my uh, my trust in him so I just want to really show to God that I I, I in full recognition and in 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 full appreciation that i know that it is him who's who does everything for my mom and for my family back there so i'm full of joy in just by sharing this thank all you. praise all praise to jesus all yeah. praise thank you sister for glorifying jesus it's only him. yeah sam sister sam would you like to Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Joy. No, it's nothing you, at all. Joy, it's all for God's glory. I know it's all for God's glory. Thank you. I mean, we all been somewhere that the devil's knocking on our head, so now it's our turn to put him under our feet now. So we all need to lift each other up and help each other. It's I know. And also pray for me. I always pray. I'm, I have been praying for boldness to be able to speak the goodness and faithfulness of God into my life. Uh, you know, um, English is not my first language, but, you know, I know. Uh, I, but I, I pray to God, uh, the, my desire to really share um, his love and his goodness and his power, what he has done in my life. So I have been praying for boldness and also wisdom. Please pray for me. Yeah. 
sorry, sister. I'm working at joy. We don't we know the word of God. We just have to hold on to the word of God and confess the word of God. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. So thank you, everyone, for joining. And we all thank Jesus for his presence, his divine presence, and for anointing us, for anointing each one of us more and more. Thank you, everyone. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.